Hi, this is Jay's Gordon Arctura Library here with a book review. Today's book I'll be talking about today. Two Minute Warning by George LaFonte. This is from Fawcett Crest Books, and this was published in 1975. This was a very slow, dull, disappointing thriller. I was really let down with this book. I picked this book after seeing the movie of the same name, which I'll t touch upon that um, later on in my review. But I was uh, it I was interested in reading this book after watching the movie because the movie actually was really good. Uh, however, when I read the book, it was the kind of opposite where this is one of those cases where the film is better than the book it's based on. And I'll explain more in my review of why I felt the film was def was a, like way better than the book as. The novel gets off to an interesting start, but it has a lot of like, kind of like, backtracking where it follows uh, the, the the sniper or the the, the killer. Uh, it follows like his tragedy and all the things he went through in life leading up to the event where what he's about to do, and then you follow these other characters for a bit. Like I felt the and the, the other thing too is that um, one of my uh, complaints was. The book focused mostly on the killer and the the cop characters uh, more than the um, than some than civilian characters in the book. Like um, in the film, there was like it focused like more on the police characters, the civilian characters, and uh, very little on the killer himself. So I I felt that the film was definitely a lot better. The book like I felt it could have been so much better and. It, it was a lot of reading, I was getting really bored, and I thought, okay, the ending's going to probably have some big grand finale, and when it finally gets to the part you're waiting for, it's not, it's nothing, really anything spectacular, I was really just let down, it was just like, wow, I read, I read all the way to the end just to read this, I thought, this could have been so much better. Uh, luckily, though, the film is a lot better. Alright, on to the book review. Plot. The TV crew at the Super Bowl in L.A. are broadcasting today's live football match between the Miami Dolphins and the Washington Redskins at the Super Bowl. So far, the game is going well with the Dolphins in the lead with 14 points and the Redskins at zero. However, Phil notices something on the screen from the Goodyear blimp. There, a man behind the scoreboard looking over the game and resting next to the wall behind him is a rifle. He quickly alerts security and orders the camera not to focus on the armed man, fearing it will cause a panic. When the head of security, Don Penny, comes in, Phil has the blimp show a camera shot of the man hiding behind the scoreboard armed with his rifle. Phil asks him if it's one of his men, but Don replies it isn't and they wouldn't be armed with a rifle. Don goes to call police. Arriving quickly at the stadium is Sergeant Richard Marks along with Sergeant Roman Gratz, head of LA SWAT unit. As of now, nobody else knows about the sniper, which Richard wants to keep it that way, along with carefully planning out how to take down this guy without shooting bystanders. Gratz goes over the layout of the stadium and plans to place his men in two of the light towers along with other areas to have a good view of the sniper and be ready to fire when given the order. Marks agrees to the plan, however he wants Gratz men disguised as maintenance workers along with keeping their weapons hidden from the people so they don't raise the alarm. While Gratz is getting his men into position, Marks and Don are unsure if the sniper is here to kill a few politics that are here watching the game or fire into the crowd. Marks believes if Marks believe if the sniper is here for the politics, he would rather move them out around the two-minute warning, as if they move them now, it will cause the sniper to begin firing into the crowd, knowing he's been spotted. It's a risky move, but Don agrees to the plan, along with only sending in security to escort them out safely. As the timer is getting closer to the two-minute warning, the sniper has been waiting for the right moment to strike after suffering years of abuse from his parents along with his struggles to form a friendship with someone and even hook up with a girl he liked. All his f past failures have led him to... Oh, all his past failures have led him being a loner with anger building up inside of him and to prove he isn't a failure, he plans to assassinate the President of the United States along with anybody else he feels like killing. Will Mark and Gratz be able to stop the sniper, or is it too late? 
Two Minute Warning was a decent but slow thriller. While it has a large cast of characters to fall within the story, but felt it focused more on the law enforcement and sniper and less on the civilian characters. Some characters I felt were crafted better than others, however, there wasn't really anyone that I liked. Detail was very light and dull at times, which I had to visualize in my mind to picture every scene happening within the novel. And lastly, the big finale was a huge letdown, a very small body count when the sniper finally begins firing off his sniper rifle, but isn't anything spectacular. If the offer put more detail into the story, along with adding more likable and unlikable characters, cut back on the killer's backstory, and focus the finale on violence and chaos, then this novel would have been better. However, the 1976 film of the same name star Charlton Heston improves the plot by adding a shocking opening scene, more rich layer characters into the story, and a solid cast of actors, better pacing, making the killer more mysterious of his motives, and the finale is way better with a higher body count that's bloody along with the chaos that ensues. Overall, I don't recommend Two Minute Warning. It's a very dull and tame thriller. Go check out the 76 film of the same name, but don't watch the heavily edited TV film version, as it alters the story by adding a unwanted subplot that ruins the original story. The film is way better. And that's it for the review today. Yeah, this one's a short and simple one. I was expecting a lot more from this book, and I was really disappointed by it. Like, this is an average uh, length book, like 240 pages, so I'm expecting, like, the last part to be, like, all nonstop action and violence and a lot of headshots, and I got none of that. What I mostly got was a kind of, like, a, a lot of, like, metal, uh, uh, metal drama with the, the killer and, it, it, like, the story constantly, like, explaining a bunch of things he went through and stuff, and... Like, I don't mind, like, a little bit of a backstory, but I felt the author focused too much on this to the point where it's like, okay, I don't want to read... The, like, I, I, get the, I, I get the general idea of what, why the way he is, but the author kind of focused too much on that to the point where it, it was just... It was, I was really getting tired of reading this, and I just wanted to see him pick up his rifle and finally use it. Like, it, it's just a long wait till he finally picks up and uses it. Um, the the story, like, does uh, show, like, the the... the the, the, the killer, what what drove him to this uh, this to, this, to, to reach this breaking point and stuff, and I was like okay, but as I said, I felt the offer focused too much on that. It should have been less of that and more on like focusing on the other characters to kind of build up like you know the, like the suspense, and then when we get to the alley, the finale, get this like big grand um, bloody shootout and stuff. That's what I was hoping for. Um, well, the like the like the law enforcement characters were okay. Marks and Gratz were all right. Um, there was a couple other characters that were okay. I just kind of wish they, they had like a more of a better personality. They they kind of um, some of the characters to me kind of felt similar to other characters, just the way they they talked and acted stuff. They kind of just felt a little similar. Like it wasn't really like different person personalities bouncing off each other. Like uh, not all the characters were like that, but it just kind of felt, some of the characters just felt a little too similar to each other. I just wished that there was like different personalities kind of bouncing off each other and stuff. The rest of the novel, like the detail is very, like very light and minimal. So there are scenes I had to kind of heavily visualize my mind what was going on. I just wish the author fo focused more on the details as well, because while he does explain what, 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 what the characters are doing, what's happening, but he doesn't put enough detail into it. So I had to kind of visualize my mind what's going on and stuff. And it's a good thing I saw the movie, so that way I kind of get a really good idea of what's going on because I I, I don't really go to that many like um like st like uh bi like big um like sport games and stuff at stadiums and stuff. I've been to like uh, a couple of baseball games in the past, but that's about it. Um, I haven't been to like you know like a like a football match or a baseball game in a long time, uh, or basketball or or any of those big sports. I haven't been to any of those, so. It's, so I'm glad I saw the movie to kind of give me an idea of what, what, what the kind of like the layout of the, of the area was like and stuff. Um, so yeah, so they felt the detail could have been better. I wish uh, some of the characters kind of have, you know, like like different personalities and stuff. Like just, you know, make them different from each other. Um, as I said, I felt like the, the two main, the two, the two main leads, like um, Marx and, um, and Gratz, I kind of felt were a bit similar to each other. Like they weren't really that different from one another. So I wish there was like something different between the two of them and stuff. Uh, the killer, uh, as I said, like he's got, he's got has a tragic backstory and stuff, but uh, I kind of felt this character kind of got boring uh, halfway through the novel. I was getting really bored with this character. I thought there's enough. I, I I I like. Okay, I get why why he's doing what he's doing, but it, I just started to get bored with him, and I just I don't know. 
I just felt he could have been like a like a, a more um, kind of. I felt he was kind of like a like a like a push like you know like a pushover, and I kind of wish he was a bit more darker and stuff, like a like a a, a more a darker personality and stuff. Um, uh, as for the, some of the civilian characters we follow, like um, uh, compared to the film, it's very different. Um, the the civilians in the book, if I recall it, I think it's like th just like three characters, and that's in the film. Like offers like a lot more characters to follow, which that I like better. And I was I was telling my dad this, and he was like, "What?" So at the very end of the book, spoiler alert, when the, the killer finally begins shooting at people and stuff, and when the SWAT begins firing back at him. Everyone else is oblivious to what's going on. Everyone is still watching the football game, and they don't know uh, the horror that is going on above them. I thought there is no way that people would be like, um, like, not, not hearing like the shots being fired and stuff, and you know, there's where people are getting hit, and, and everyone's still watching it. I thought there is no way someone would notice what is going on, and that would cause a panic, which that doesn't happen in the book. Uh, like the character, like the, the killer fires his rifle a few times, and the SWAT fires their shots, and then the game still goes on, and, and nobody notices. I thought there's there's no way P people would hear the shots and see things happening around them and stuff. Um, as for the film, the same name, I felt the film was a lot better. Uh, I felt the characters were a, a lot better in the film, like they're better crafted, crafted and layered, and it's like the different personalities bounce off each other and stuff. Uh, I, 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 I like any film with Charlton Heston. He's one of my favorite actors, so it was fun watching him in this film. And the, the, it also has some other big stars in it, too, and stuff. Uh, I, however, I like in the film, however, when the killer is like the... They just, the in the film, the killer is mysterious. You don't know his name until the very end of the, of the film, which they, they they changed a lot of names from the characters in the, from the book and stuff. Um... But the killer is very mysterious. You don't know what his motive is and what why he's doing it. Uh, the, the, actually, there's one scene I like in the in the film. It's like it's very very beginning, where the movie starts off where you you see like a like a hotel room and it's open and you see a sniper scope suddenly appear and it, it's like it's like like the it, I think the killer adjusts it a bit and then the scope is like looking around this neighborhood and all of a sudden it shows like this couple riding a bike and the killer follows them and then shoots the one cyclist and then after he kills the cyclist he uh he disassembles his rifle puts an around to the magazine put hides it in his um trench coat checks out the hotel room and just casually walks to his car and he's just driving on the freeway like like nothing happened and you're like whoa this is really cool and it's like they, they don't they they don't show his face until like towards the end of the films so they're making him very mysterious and I really like that. I really like that. Where, where is the, it really builds up the suspense, like who's this ki killer and what's he pl plotting and stuff. Um, when he gets to the, when he, uh, and then of course when he gets to the football game, it shows how he gets he how he gets into to, to above the scoreboard. The film he's already there, so it doesn't ex really explain how he got there. Um, and then the film follows all these other characters, so you're wondering, okay, wh who, who, who uh, out of all these characters, even the law enforcement characters, you're wondering. Who's going to make it out alive at the end of this film? Who's going to uh, make it out alive? Who's going to get shot by the killer? That's the big build-up, and I really like that, because in the film, they make it mysterious of what the motive is. Uh, the, uh, it's the film plays around with the idea that he's there to assassinate the president, or is he just there to, just to shoot at, at, at random bystanders and stuff? So th I like that in the film a lot better, where it's more mysterious and stuff. And the and the great scenery shots in, in the film, too. The music I did mind. Uh, actually, there's some re really um, uh, parts. There's a few parts in the soundtrack I really liked, but the finale at the end of the movie is awesome. Like it, like I thought actually uh, it was gonna be the polar opposite. Was the film was gonna be less violent and the book was gonna be more violent? No, it's the polar opposite. Where the book, uh, the the book is less violent. The movie is more violent, especially t towards the end where. This guy is like doing like headshots and they're bloody, and then he starts shooting at the at the people and stuff, and this causes like a big panic and then a stampede, and it's just utter chaos. And and me and my dad were watching this with our jaws dropped, with our jaws dropped open, and like holy shit, this is awesome. And oh man, it was a really good, mo a really good movie. So I highly recommend you check out the movie uh, Two Minute Warning. It's an excellent film. However, make sure uh, it's on Blu-ray so you can get it on Blu-ray or DVD, whatever uh, format you want to get it. But make sure you do not get the uh, horrible TV edited version. As I was reading, some, I was doing some research on this uh, movie, and I found out something about a subplot with, with like uh, 
with uh, like uh, an art theft, and I was like, "What is this? What is this subplot?" And I actually first thought the subplot was this um this these other characters that were added into the film were these um kind of like a a team or a couple. I don't know. It's not, it's they don't explain it in the film, but the this like woman and an older man are like pickpocketing people's wallets at the stadium to take money uh, to take money. And I thought that was a subplot they added to kind of um kind of tone down the violence a bit. No, that wasn't it. That was part of the film script. So the TV plot does this, like, to me this is an absolutely shitty idea. Basically the subplot, this TV version, is that um, the killer is part of like a, a group of thieves and they're going to steal a bunch of paintings from an art museum next door so the killer is going to distract the cops that way the thieves can go into the museum and steal the pictures and this is the, like an absolute terrible idea. That, like this doesn't tie in with the story and... <clears throat> Apparently, the the TV version cuts out like 40 minutes of the movie and it slices in this horrible footage. And the director hated it and he it disowns the TV version. He he still has the um, uh, the rights to the, the the theatrical film, but the TV version he doesn't want that shit. Many of the actors uh, gone on to say that the the theatrical version was better. The TV, the TV version was horrible as uh, the actors don't. Like the actor, like some of the actors actually came back to redo these sh like reshoots and stuff, but they don't even look like what they did in the film. So th that, that that's that's one thing with, with, to me with, with a film. Don't don't it don't butcher something that's perfect the first time. Just leave it as it is. If you try editing it when the actors look different, you, like a you know like a like a few years later, or so it, it just ruins it and, and stuff. And the reason why there's there's this TV version is because uh, the two TV studios did, did, felt it was too violent, uh, too dark to show on TV, so they, that's why this TV version exists. And I thought to myself, what, they can't show this late at night or something? I, I, I don't get it. I, I, to me, I think it's a really stupid decision, and then this whole subplot uh, is just awful. So if you, if you want to check out this movie... Make sure that to check out the the just just watch the theatrical version. Don't watch the TV version of Tormented Warning. It's it, it's awful. The original film is way better. All right, that's it for the that's it for the review. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I have some very good news. Um, soon I'm gonna get a new ceiling fan installed, so this um, uh, lighting problem I'm having is gonna be over soon. So. I, I already got a new ceiling fan, I just have to get it installed, and then once it's installed, then uh, everything, and I'll have uh, my room much brighter again, so I won't need um, the the ring light anymore. <laughs> oh man, I can't, I can't wait to have a ceiling fan in here, and I get a new one, because this ceiling fan is really, is really starting to like wear, wear down and stuff. Alright, that's the review today, hope you all enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe to Octar Library, the YouTube channel, and the Facebook group of the same name, please support your review fiction, until then, I'll catch you later.